So, Brian, what appeals, appealed to you about this film and your character? I think simply that the, the, the script written by Chris Terrio was just so compelling and so complete that it was like reading a novel almost. I, I saw it. I envisioned the open air market and I, I smelled the, the spices and the food and the life and the, the tightness and the tension and all of that coming together and then cutting away to the CIA and, and what strings had to be pulled there and the political, social uh, relationships. And uh, it's just, it, it just all came together and you could feel the tension and, and anxiety grow as the script got deeper and deeper into the story. And um, so that's, that's all it takes for an actor to be taken away. Um, because we read a lot of scripts and quite frankly, a, a lot of them leave you wanting to take a nap as opposed to wanting to get jump in and get involved in something. Did you know anything about this um, story before getting involved in the project? Well, I actually did read the uh, Wired magazine article that came out in 98, 7, 98 or something, uh, but then I've since forgotten it. Uh, and it wasn't until I reread the script that I realized, wait a minute, I do remember reading this story and why didn't I n not remember that specifically? But uh, at the time, in 1980, no, I was in my mid-20s, and I was, uh, it, all we were told is that Canada helped to, to save six American uh, out, of, uh, out of Iran, and that was it. So let's talk about your character then. Who is Jack O'Donnell in your eyes? Who is Jack O'Donnell? That's a good question. Um, he's a composite of characters at the CIA. It wasn't any one person. But um, I think it was important for the audience to be able to put a name and a face to the person representing the CIA portion of the film. Um, and so a lot of research was done on, on the part of Chris Terrio for the script and, and myself. Uh, I went to Langley, Virginia and, and talked to CIA officers and was able to, to cull the information from them to, to create you know, a foundation for myself that I felt uh, informed who this man was and how he thinks and feels and what would be appropriate as a response in any given situation. Such a rich character. Um, what do you enjoy about um, getting in life on the screen? Well, there's several aspects of it. First of all, it's um, to be able to play someone who is, uh, for his whole career, a person who is very secretive, a spy. You can't talk, you know. What does that do to you personally and professionally? And um, I, I thought that was fascinating. That that element of it. Um, what does that do to, to your own body when when you have to retain information and you can't let it go, because it's it's not only is it unprofessional, it's it's uh, illegal and and you're sworn to secrecy. What does that do to to a person withholding? information. Anyway, um, and so that was that was fascinating for me. And then I just drop into the story. What is my portion of this story? What, what element does my character bring to aid the story, to propel it along? And you figure that out and you work with the director on, on that conversation, the relationship between Ben's character and mine, and it, it, it grows and it, it matures into a place where it seems to work. You play Ben's boss, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of relationship do they have? Uh, Tony Mendez and Jack O'Donnell had a, a, a very good relationship, a friendly relationship. I don't know if you could say they were good friends, as I think that was an interesting aspect of it, is that they're not buddy-buddy, hey, tell me what's wrong kind of thing. Release your demons and let me help you. It was, um, it was kind of appropriate for their line of work, that they were friendly, they could depend on each other. They got each other's back, if need be, as we see in the film. Um, but there was a, a certain feeling of division between them, perhaps because of age. or. But I, I looked at it like a mentor-mentee sort of relationship. It's interesting because you're his boss in the movie, but at the same time he's directing the movie that you're in, right? Right. So, yeah, I'm his boss in the movie, but making the movie, he's my boss. So I made him pay when our characters are together. I rub his nose into it, you know. No. What can you say about Ben as a director and as an actor on this project? 
Uh, you know what's interesting is that is that when I direct myself, um, I don't really think too much about how I'm going to portray a character because in all the research and work you do in the in the pre-production meetings and the, all that uh, source material that you're reading, your character starts to come to you. It starts to seep into you. So the focus really for Ben was on directing, and he did a terrific job. He's truly a, a gifted director. Um, a great sensibility on the set creates a nice calm environment uh, to where we feel that we can we can perform well, take chances, we're relaxed, we're having an enjoyable time. Um, without, he never takes his eye off what he needs to get or what that thing, that scene we're shooting right now, how does that fit in the context of the story? And, um, and it's, he's got a very firm hand on that. He's very intelligent, he, he's knowledgeable on the subject. Um, and as an actor, he, he just drops in. He's like, ready, this is ready, this is ready. Okay, that's done. Now I'm gonna drop in as an actor. And you can see him making a little shift, a little adjustment to what he needs to do as a character. And uh, it's good to see, he's very, very good at it. Argo tells a true story. Isn't it amazing how real life events can sometimes be more incredible than anything we can imagine? It's bizarre. Uh, the f I, I think what's fun about, about Argo is when you sit in that theater and you know that this is based on, a, on true events, it just makes the story that much richer for the experience because it's, it's implausible. This should be able to work, and yet it did. What did you think of the film once you saw it completed? I love the film. I think it, it's not only engaging, it's um, exciting and entertaining as a film entity of itself, but it also sends a nice message um, and the message is not so clear that it's like, here's our message. Uh, to me, it was, it was, look what we can do as human beings when we work together on something, when we can get together for the greater good, for not any personal gain, because these people who, who pulled this off didn't make any financial gain, they didn't get recognition for it. It was all hush-hush. Look what can happen to save lives, and that's, a, that's an important endeavor. I also felt they don't really make films like this anymore. They don't? They make films like Argo anymore. Well, they make heroic films. They make, uh, you know, the Jason Bourne movies and things like that where heroes save the day kind of thing. But the fact that it's a true story, it, it makes it more relevant. It makes it more important because it gives you hope as a human being that all is not lost, that we can still do great things.